All right, problem number one, find the area of the region enclosed by y equals x minus 2, which is a line, y equals 4 minus x squared parabola, x equals negative 2 vertical line, x equals 1 vertical line. So if I start by graphing these objects, and um, let's pretend we don't have knowledge about where they intersect. Um, but if I start, let's, let's even start with the two vertical lines that are really easy to graph, x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 1. x equals negative 2, we've got a half scale here, so negative 1, negative 2 would be right here. And if we want to graph x equals 1, 0 0.51, that would be about right here. Well, we've got different sizes there, but whatever. Um, if we take a look then at x, y equals x minus 2, that's just a linear equation, negative 2 is the y-intercept, so this is also 0.5 scale, so negative 0.5, negative 1, negative 2 would be right here. And a slope of 1 over 1, it's half and half scale, so I can go half up, half up, or over, or up 1, right 1, doesn't matter. I just As long as I find some points along the line, that's what matters to us. So we connect the dots there with a nice straight line. I don't have that color slope to go with this purple here. Connect the dots like so, and there's that line. And we're starting to create some region in this area. And then finally, if we try and graph this y equals 4 minus x squared, I just pick some random x's and solve for y. Um, if I pick negative 2, since x equals negative 2 seems to be a point of concern, uh, negative 2 squared is 0, 4, and 4 minus 4 is 0. If I pick negative 1, negative squared is 1, 4 minus 1 is 3, so negative 1, 1, 2, 3. Again, half scale, be careful of that. If I pick x equals 0, 4 minus 0 is 4, so 0 0.5, 1, 2, 3, 4. And if x equals 1, 4 minus 1 is 3, that would be right there. And that would complete the region, so this parabola piece. And you can see I didn't continue on beyond that, and I really could have um, prevented the line from going beyond that. So the region that we're concerned with is just right here, like so. And if you recall in this section, the main concern that we have, if um, we have one graph above the other graph and we have a horizontal interval to look at, is um, what's the top, what's the bottom, and what are the constraints of the interval that we're going to deal with. So, my interval seems to be from negative 2 to 1. My top function is the parabola, which is 4 minus x squared. And my bottom function seems to be the line, which is x minus 2. So we construct an integral with this knowledge. Um, the area between the two, uh, the parabola and the line in this case, will be the integral from negative 2 to 1 of the top function 4 minus x squared minus the bottom function x minus 2 with respect to x. Next thing I would do is go ahead and combine like terms. So. Um, distribute this minus sign through, I like descending order also, so negative x squared, I've got a minus x, and this minus minus 2 becomes plus 2, added to the form x plus 6. So that's the construct integral. Graphing is going to be worth some points, getting a construct integral like that is going to be worth some points. Um, the last thing we do then is, of course, evaluate the integral correctly, so I've got three terms. First term, negative x squared, will be negative x cubed over 3. The second term is negative x becomes negative x squared over 2, in each case the power rule. And then the final term is just going to be plus 6x, and our evaluation should be from negative 2 to 1. We substitute 1 first, we're going to get negative 1 third minus 1 half plus 6. We substitute negative 2 second, we're going to get negative 8 out of this, but the minus changes it to positive 8 over 3. This becomes positive 4, the minus makes it negative 4 over 2, better known as 2, and this of course will be minus 12. So be careful of the sign issues in that sense there. Um, I like to get a common denominator right off the bat, so common denominator is 6, and I just take each individual piece and fix it, so that's negative 2 over 6. 
That's negative 3 over 6. That'll be positive 36 over 6. Then I've got this minus sign coming through here, and I have to double it, so it's going to be minus 16 over 6. Minus minus makes plus 2, and that'll be plus 12 over 6. And then minus minus makes plus, and then 12, we've got to multiply top and bottom by 6, we're going to get 72 over 6. So that's the end result of all of that. If we just add up the numbers on top, negative 2 minus 3, negative 5, and negative 16 make negative 21 for all the negatives. 36 and 12 is 48, plus 72 is 120. For the positive ones, add those up, we're going to get 99 over 6. And that seemed to reduce by 3 down to 33 over 2.